the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. All the they said broad is the way to destruction. The Bible says that, right? Broad is the way to destruction. Narrow is the path because either you're gonna be on that path or you're gonna be the same as the Sadducees and Pharisees. You know, I was talking yesterday, the fact is, and we're close to this session, is the fact is that when that man that was born blind. And, and Christ opened his eyes. The Pharisees and the Sadducees that this man talking about Christ is a sinner. And the man sit there, the man whose eyes were open, that was born blind, sat there and said, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. But what I do know, that I was once blind, but now I see. What about you? You're going to sit there and try to be more important, try to label somebody a sinner, a less dead, whatever you want to use for discrimination, and then recognize that that means you. Because you think those Sadducees and Pharisees were on the highway to heaven? Do you think when you hate somebody, oppress somebody, keep somebody down, did you on? Do you think that you're on a highway to heaven, or do you know that you're on a highway to hell, and that you don't care how you get there, because that's your choice? Well, that's the point I'm trying to tell you. Cause my mama said they they know what they're doing. So many of you have chosen carnality, have chosen to go to the highway of hell. See, it, it didn't want. It, I'm gonna close with this. For this session, this is what religion does. And check this out, guys. Check it out. This is what religion does to you, right? They 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 make you avoid. They try to cover you, blind you, concerning the highway of heaven by using other things to 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 put you put you in a category of a sinner. You know, they, they'll put down the fact that you went to the club last night. So, yeah, you, you're a sinner. They'll put down that you drank some beer or you drank some wine or you drank some whiskey or you drank whatever. And, oh, you're going to hell. They, they say that. See, right? You, you catch that? They, you, they're going to sit there and say that when well, you didn't show up to church, so you, you're going to hell. They're going to sit there and say that you... Uh, uh, you don't have the right clothes on, or you 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 got braids in your hair. You know, religious people look look at the little small things that divert your attention away from the thing that does lead to hell. So you going to the club doesn't mean doesn't mean you're going to hell. No, no, it doesn't. But if you sit there and hate somebody, you gonna sit there and have unforgiveness with somebody. You are gonna sit there and do the will of the, your flesh. And you constantly go that way. <laughs> you go. You pray. You tell. You. You are. The, you're trying to distract people by the fact is that there is a way to go that leads to eternal life. You're trying to distract it. You're trying to be a hypocrite. You're trying to not go in yourself, but you're also trying to keep other people going in as well. Because you want to sit there and say, well, you were a prostitute, you were you were a junkie, you were you were black, or you were white, or you were Hispanic, you were all that other stuff. That you're going to sit there and say, these are the things that keep you from going into heaven. While in reality, you going after the ungodly and trying to keep the ungodly from turning toward the highway of heaven. You putting your own roadblocks up for yourself because you already chose the highway of hell. Do you want to do God's will or you want to do your own will? That's the question you have. All right, that's going to be for session one. Might have took a little long time, but I think we're going to sit there and show these words because I'm trying to ask yourself, are you choosing life or are you choosing death? Choose life. Choose life, saints. Choose life. 
get off this kick of sitting there trying to put people and think you're going to put people in hell, demonize people and think that you're going to heaven. When he came and said, he came to save the ungodly. And you sit there trying to hate the ungodly, being ungodly yourself. Because when you do that, that's ungodly. When you hate somebody, that's ungodly. When you oppress somebody, that's ungodly. When you discriminate against somebody, that's ungodly. When you have unforgiveness in your heart, that's ungodly. There's a lot of ungodly things of jealousy and unforgiveness and, 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 and pride. Ungodly acts. And you sit there and think that you're going to heaven. And then you got the audacity to sit there and teach your children to go to hell. How dare you? And what are you going to do when you go see God? Think about it. All right, we'll go to the next one, all right? So now, I use that as my marker point. Bang. Now let's go to the next session. So what we want to do is talk about the doing the will of the Father. We just finished doing the Lord's Prayer. And now it's time for us to get into the meat of the discussion of the scriptures that we want to talk about today. And, and I, I really... And they're going to keep going into that same vein. Are you choosing life or are you choosing death? Are you on the highway to heaven or are you on the highway to hell? And do you want to go to the highway to hell because of pride and unforgiveness and, and all those other things? What, what do you want to do? Do you want to? Uh, do you want eternal life? You know, the rich man came to Christ and and asked that question and said, what must I do to be saved? Testing my mic here. What, what you know, he, he said that he came, he's a rich and ruler. And he said, what must I do to inherit, inherit eternal life? Well, that's the same thing you should ask yourself. And not only for yourself, but for your children's children. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Do I inherit eternal life by deceiving myself or inherit eternal life by doing God's will? All right? Now, everybody loves this portion of the session I'm talking about. It's talking about, look at this, this is what it says. And I would say anybody that can even have an issue with this message, teaching the gospel in Yeshua's way, he that loves not does not know God. But God is love. So what I'm saying is, as we move forward in these scriptures, the question is, do you want eternal life? Instead of sitting there talking about whether somebody is going, they're savage and demonizing other people, you need to check yourself. You need to check yourself. Stop trying to look at other people. Look at these scriptures here. I'm going to ask you the question. Because this is really the, the, the question is, are you choosing eternal life? Do you want eternal life? Do you want to do his will? Look at this right here. In verse Matthew 7, 15. And the bad thing about it, I'm going to tell you what a false prophet is. When he sit there and, and take his, look at his fellow man. And tell his fellow man, you are not worthy to get into heaven. You are ungodly. You are a sinner. And you do not deserve eternal life. When you hear somebody teach any kind of way, any form or fashion, you don't you let people deceive you. Don't let yourself deceive. It, it's God's will. Every minister is supposed to be teaching God's will. You sit there and try to teach your human flesh will. You are in bad shape. You are on the world of destruction. Get off your change direction and start looking to be godly. But hate is not godly. Anger is not godly. Unforgiveness is not godly. And you got people to sit there and want to go after people because of political party, political affiliation. That's not God's will. Your political party is not your is not God's will. And you're dealing with false prophets. Mm. 
Beware false prophets coming to come to you as sheep clothing. And that's a concern I have for you. Some of you have been taught to be to have sheep clothing on, but a raven, but inside you are wolves. Raving wolves. Because anytime you hate somebody, want to put somebody down, when you want to discriminate people against people. You are not a sheep, but you put it on the clothing of a sheep. You cloud yourself with your faith, but your inward action tells us that that's not who you are. Verse 16 says, you shall know them by their fruits, not by what you say you are by your fruit. See, people, I have, I have been many cases where being accused of things as a supervisor, uh, as a person, and, and by the time the person shows up to you, they, 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 they have an impression, what you call it, a, uh, they, have, they have made of their mind of who and what you are. And how many of us have done that, right? How many of us who hear, well, all these black people are a certain way and that's what you form your opinion on. And then you react that way. Or, all these Christians are this way, all these Muslims are that way, you know? And then, you, so you, you, you even heard the things, not, a, not go by the action. I mean, if you have been where you heard something about somebody, then when you meet the person, you see that somebody totally different. That, and then you, tra you treat them differently because of the fact of how they uh, responding to you. In other words, you can hate somebody because you don't know them. But when you see them and you see how they behave themselves, and then you start to say, this is a person, this is an honorable person, this is a good person, then, then you need to understand that is how life, and that's how you must treat everybody anyway. You don't sit there and accept an opinion about somebody on somebody else's words. And then you don't sit there and become angry and evil toward that person just because of what you heard. You need to make sure that, first of all, know the person, check their fruit out. And that, how many of you are saying that you're Christian, but your fruits don't add up to it? Because maybe you don't know what a Christian is, but I guarantee a Christian is not somebody who oppress, but to love. Not somebody who have unforgiveness, but to forgive. Huh? I think that's important to recognize. The fact is, in verse 16, you should know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil. Look at that word evil too. Evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. So when we talk about all that hate, the forgiveness that you have, that means you're not a good tree. You're going to, and look, let me listen, put it, and you're going to the highway of hell. <laughs> you get to, you, let, 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 why don't we all just be real about it, right? If you show, if you be an evil, I mean outright evil, see, it's not going to the club that's evil. It's not sitting there drinking your wine or your liquor and stuff being evil. It's not sitting there going to the game that's evil. It's not sitting there washing your car instead of going to church service that's evil. What's evil is hate, discrimination, murder. Unforgiveness, jealousy. Those are the evil things. And yet you sit there and somebody can sit there. You know, they're going to sit there and, and, and show all those bad characteristics and sit there and say, I'm going to have, you're not. You're not. Until you change, until you repent, you are not. Let me come off this for a second. I'm going to come back on it. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you the truth. You're not. If you 
show anger and unforgiveness because of differences of people. If you even show the, if you show an unforgiveness and things that Christ said, I came to save the ungodly. He said, I didn't call the righteous to repentance. I called the unrighteous. He came to help point the way. Are you helping to point the way? Or are you helping to burn people at the stakes? Are you encouraging uh, the system to putting people down you know i was sitting there they're talking about the they're talking about the social security right and and, and, and medicaid and, and they want to kill those they want to give uh some people want to give uh, money to the rich people and make sure they pay less taxes than than other people and then at the same time they're gonna say we can't afford to, to feed people we can't afford to give kids to go to school college we, we can't afford that we can afford to we can afford to do other things, but we can't afford that. And you do it based on not the love of God, but you do it on your own selfish reasons. When you sit there and say, "I, I you know, I, I like this one study." One time, somebody said they say, uh, "Pull, pull up by the boots, pull up by your bootstraps, right?" And the person don't have boots, and you sit there and say, "What are you talking about?" Well. If you don't give them something to pull from, you don't give them something that they can work from. If you don't give them something that they can use to be prosperous, but you want to find everything to keep a person from being prosperous. But if you don't want to feed the poor, when Christ had then said you had a poor with you always, and Christ had the, the, the pattern of feeding the poor, feeding the hungry, having compassion on the ungodly, you know, a sinner, an adulteress, right? And, and yet you don't have that compassion. Let me just tell you something. Go talk to your pastor and let him talk. And he, if he thinks the same way you think, then you can sit there and say, Pastor, can we do, should, uh, is it okay for us to do our will or God's will? Just ask him, whose will should we go by? Do we do evil toward people that's not like us? Do we don't give forgiveness to people that's not like us? Do we sit there and, and put down people that don't go to our church service, our denomination, our political party, our color of skin? Can, is it all right to do evil to those people? Is it all right to do evil to people because it's legal? I had one friend sit there and talk about the fact is that, you know, during the slavery time, he said, well, so it was legal to, to, to treat you as property. And the bad thing about it, when you think about it, is that when you listen to that, and you sit there and say, "So that's that's you," is it legal for you to damage your property, be destructive to property? And then on top of that, is that even if you think that the law of the land is saying that it's okay to do it, does the does it override the will of God? Every last one of ask that question: Does the land, law of the land, overrides the will of God. And what the thing that I'm gonna talk about in these scriptures is what over laws we're talking about. There's God's laws, right? We know that, and then there's man's laws. Let's sit there and see what the answer is supposed to be when we sit there and talk about <laughs> doing uh, what is all right, what's legal in the land that gives us the right to do, to violate the laws of God. <laughs> You, what what see see there's some laws that allow you to be evil. So if the law allows you to be evil, that makes you good to go. That means that you 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 squared away. Because Lord, I did I did I did the law of the land. I didn't do your law. I didn't do your commandments. I didn't do your will. I did the law of the land, and therefore I should be okay because I did what the law of the land said. Not your will, but you know the law of the land. What do you think it's gonna do? What do you think it's gonna do? What God going to say when you go to heaven or try to get to heaven and you're going to sit there and say, Lord, it was legal. Oh, Lord, help him. Help him. Let's go and read that. It says 17. So every good tree to bring forth good fruit 
He said, even so, every good tree that bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. That's verse 17. Verse 18, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. So even if you have a law of the land or, your, or culture differences, those cultures does not give you the right to bring, do evil things or bear evil fruit. You hear what I'm saying? Do you hear the words that's coming out of my mouth what the scripture said? It says, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. So if there is a law or a culture or a position or what your mama, or your daddy or your friends is say, or your political party says, it says a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth good fruit is hewn down and cast. Let me see. Every tree, every tree that bringeth bringeth forth bringeth not forth good fruit. Excuse me, that's what it meant. Get that. Make sure that because they're gonna sell with the, it. Ain't gonna be added out. Correction. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. This, um, I don't know about you, but I think that's very important. Let me come off this thing. I don't know about you. That's very important. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. So if there's a law of the land, if there's a cultural divide, if there's a, a, a cardinal Divide, divide, meaning you 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 hate people because of the color of their skin. You hate people because of where they came from. You hate people because they they from the north or from the south. You hate people because they part of this political party, that political party, and you hate them. You ban evil fruit. That means you're not good fruit. I mean, you're not going to heaven. You can sit there and play all day long. You can sit there. I'm going to heaven, but I'm going to hate this person. I'm going to heaven. But I'm going to oppress this person. I'm going to heaven because, but I'm going to sit there and make that person starve to death. I'm going to heaven because I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm going all going to heaven. No, you're not. Unless you repent, you're not. And if you teach your children to be evil like you, you're teaching your children to go to hell. That's, that's the whole point of that. You can talk any way you want to. You can look at it any way you want to. If you don't sit there, some of you sit there and, and you, how do you think you're going to operate in grace to commit evil things to people? See, we sit there, we, 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 it's a big difference between you sitting there doing violent harm to yourself. It's the point when you do violent harm to somebody else. That's evil. Bad enough you're doing it to yourself. But even worse when you do it to somebody else. That's evil. And he said, if you're doing, if you're practicing evil, you're waking up and thinking about it every day, every day. Evil, 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 evil. That's all you can think about towards somebody, towards your fellow man. You go sit there, I can't forgive. I ain't going to forgive nobody. That's evil. And unless you repent, you're going, you're going the highway to hell. That's what you're trying to do. That's what you're trying to do. Because it says, a good tree, verse 18, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Check your fruit. What are you bearing? Yeah, I'm going to go some more scriptures. I know sometimes it's like, man, you may get a whole bunch of scriptures. Yeah, I do. Because you, need, you ain't reading it. Because if you're reading, you wouldn't do what you're doing. Look at this scripture right here. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Are you listening to what the words are saying? Or are you too busy listening to people who want to do the opposite of the word of God and sit there and try to teach you to do the opposite of the word of God? And then your parents teach you to do the opposite of the word of God. He said, and said, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Did you hear what he said? Christ said the same thing when he was in, in, in the garden of Gethsemane. He said, not, nevertheless, not thy will, not my will, but thy will be done. When is the fact is that you believe that you can brew evil things and think that you're doing the will of God toward your fellow man? When did you, who gave you the permission? I'm bring, come on, I'm coming off again. Yeah, I'm coming off again. Who gave you the permission? Who gave you the permission to do evil things? Who 
gave you? Who gave you permission to do evil? Who gave you permission to, to, to oppress and hate somebody because they're different? Who gave you the tool to use evil tools to do something and say that you're still doing God's will? Who? And you know, ain't nothing but the devil that told you because the fact is that God did not tell you to be evil. He said, be not deceived. God is not marked. For what some of a man soweth, that's really also reap. If you're sitting there sowing hate, jealousy, unforgiveness, if you're doing that, if you're doing that toward people, you are choosing destruction. You are choosing eternal death. You're not operating in grace. You're operating in evil. A tree is known by its fruit. He just told you not everybody says, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father. Are you, every action that you take, you need to ask and measure, not about your denomination, not about your political party, not about the color of your skin, not about your mama and your daddy, but is it the will of God? That's why the Bible tells you to study the word of God so that you can do the will of God. Yeah, we all make mistakes. Don't get me wrong with that. To practice it, this is your goal and intent. Is your goal and intent to do the things that lines up with God's will? Some of you are sitting there getting all lapped, wrapped up and tired about the fact is that I, can, I'm, I'm, I still sin. When you still sin, are you intending to sin or are you trying to do right? But the fact that I'm sitting there saying is that when you sit there and sin, when you sit there and hate your fellow man, when you sit there intentionally continuing over and over again, over again, and see, I used to have some most of you sitting there talking about your addiction, your strongholds. When you talk about your addiction, your strongholds, we're talking about the fact that your hate and jealousy and your racism and everything else that goes against the will of God. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about your political affiliation and, or your lack of non-political affiliation, affiliation, but the fact is that you, your affiliation is how can I oppress and suppress my fellow man? How many of the people you think that went through that slave trade that actually, I, yeah, I bring it up because that's the truth. How many of you think that those people who did the murder and the raping and the killing? How many people doing the, 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 the lynching and all that stuff? How many of those people that burnt people alive, castrated people? Oh, good Lord. How many of those people do you think was doing the will of God? And where, if you do think they were doing the will of God, show me in the scriptures that they were doing the will of God as a Christian. Show me in as a Christian. That's who you profess to be. Right? That's who you profess to be. Show me where it is right to discriminate, right to hate somebody. Because you don't like what they're doing. Show me in the scripture that said that's what you're supposed to do. Tell your pastor to show me. Show me. See, you know, your pastor said you're supposed to hate. You hate that person. You're supposed to hate that person. And, and you said, some of you sit there and say, well, I hate. I'm a, but see, you, it's, 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 you say in your mouth, I'm not hating the person. But your actions is what tells me who you hate. Your action tells me who you discriminate against. Your action tells me who you have unforgiveness to. It's your actions that is telling me who you are. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.